The teachings of our Catholic faith make clear that taking an innocent human life is a grievous sin, but many Christian ministers and religious leaders are using their faith to justify their pro-abortion advocacy. Across the country, religious leaders who claim Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are challenging pro-life laws and arguing that they infringe on their religious freedom. One ordained minister in the Presbyterian Church, Reverend Rebecca Todd Peters, wants churches to openly talk about abortion. In an article from Religious News Service earlier this month, she shares her desire to shift the narrative when it comes to Christianity and abortion. Donned in a pink Planned Parenthood stole, Peters has given dozens of sermons on abortion and has even had to herself. She says she felt God's presence with me as I made the decision to end two pregnancies and I felt no guilt, no shame, no sin. A forced pregnancy or birth is not holy. Archbishop Joseph Nauman of the Archdiocese of Kansas City joins us now to discuss. He also previously served as the chairman of the USCCB's Pro-Life Committee. Archbishop Nauman, welcome back. It's always a joy to have you on the show. Thanks, Prudence. It's good to be with you and your viewers and listeners. Of course. Archbishop, it's a sad fact that there are many people who both claim our Christian faith and also support abortion. They say that pro-life laws, quote, go against their religion. Where is this notion coming from and, and what's your reaction? Well, I mean, I think one of the, the the greatest sufferings that anybody can experience is the death of a child. Yes. And uh, as a priest, I've accompanied many, many parents at this time. But when you when you layer on top of that, I chose the death of my child. This is a, a tremendous, tremendous burden. And I think the way people react to it, are, are, there's a variety of ways. I mean, when I was in the pro-life office uh, in St. Louis and Project Rachel, we would have some women that would call us up immediately after leaving the abortion clinic. But I think others, you know, kind of pushed down um, what's going on inside of them. And one of the ways is to try and defend it um, and to try to, uh, one of the ways I think to react to this is to try to um, figure out a rationale to justify uh, what you've done. And we, we see all sorts of evils through history that people will attempt to use religious faith uh, to justify them and, you know, I mean, that we see this in the Nazis, we see it with all sorts of, um, of grave evils. There's always a tendency to try to find a rationale or justification, right. even a religious one. Right, and a handful of women have said that choosing abortion was a religious experience for them, going that far to sort of justify this and come up with a rationale. They say they felt peace with their decision, and we know that these feelings aren't coming from God, but these women claim that they are, where are they truly coming from? Well, you know, I think it, it's, I, I do think some women do experience a peace afterwards because they were so anxious in terms of the pregnancy. Right. But that wears off um, pretty soon, I think, for most of them. And you either face into the, the reality of what you've chosen uh, and a lot of times, you know, I think the, the women oftentimes are the second victims of the abortion, but um, they don't come away from the abortions without spiritual, psychological, emotional scars. Right. And, um, but I think, you know, there's always a, a desire to try to justify and, and, and find um, reasons to support uh, even the, the evil decisions that we make. Mm. Abortion hurts women as much as, as babies. As you just mentioned, they're often the second victim of an abortion. How can women find true healing and peace after getting an abortion? Archbishop, what would be your advice to them? Yeah, I, I mean, in my accompanying women in this circumstance, the, the most challenging part is forgiving themselves. Mm. And it's only with God's grace. And so I think that's what Project Rachel and many post-abortion ministries uh, attempt to do is to help not to uh, deny what happened, but to realize that nothing is beyond God's mercy and grace, and that um, God can turn uh, this, this great sorrow that women carry and guilt, uh, and he can, he can 
alleviate that with his mercy and grace and also then use them in, in, in beautiful ways to commemorate the lives of the children that they lost. And, um, and a lot of them will do that by, you know, helping out at crisis pregnancy centers. Some will, will pray. Um, but with that, if they don't deal with it, it affects all sorts of relationships going forward, uh, even their relationships with their with future children. Of course, yes. Archbishop, thank you for all of your guidance on that. Shifting gears a bit, we're days away from the one year anniversary of the Valued in Both Amendment in Kansas. Now, this was the first pro-life ballot initiative after the overturn of Roe that unfortunately failed to pass and other amendments in other states have also failed to pass since then. Talk to me about how the Catholic community in your archdiocese learned from this loss and, and has moved forward over the past year. Yeah, we're certainly praying for other states and, and hoping they'll have a better outcome than we did. Um, for us right now, we're focused on all that we can do to surround those that are uh, contemplating abortion with love, uh, with a loving community. And so we've um, tried to step up even further our abortion alternatives. And um, yeah, I think it's it's frustrating that there's very little we can do with the law right now. But there's a lot we can do and are trying to do with love. Amen. Absolutely. Well, we encourage, we're grateful that you keep fighting the good fight and we ask you to pray for us. Um, thank you for all the work that you do. Archbishop Joseph Nauman of the Archdiocese of Kansas City. Thanks, Prudence. Thanks for your important work as well. Of God course. bless. Thank you.